A virus response and according to the State Department of Public Health, there are now more than 38,000 confirmed cases and just over 1600 deaths. More than 7000 people have been hospitalized. COVID-19 testing is ramping up in Georgia. Nearly 11 million people live in the state. The governor's office is reporting just over 3% of the state's population has been tested. More than 10% of new tests are positive. That's down from 16% just two weeks ago. Coming up on 11 Alive News at 6 p.m., we're going to take a closer look at the testing numbers and some of the factors that could be driving them up. If you need help finding testing locations, we've got you covered. There are two sites offering free testing today. Atlanta City Council member Andrea Boone is hosting the first one. You can drive through or walk up. You see the video right here. It's happening in the back parking lot of the HE Homes Marta Station. Testing is available there until 2 this afternoon. So the second one is at the Georgia International Convention Center hosted by the mayor of College Park and the Ludacris Foundation. It also ends at 2 p.m. and is drive through only. No appointment is necessary. The FDA granting an emergency authorization for an at home COVID-19 test. The company Everly Well is supplying the kits to receive the kit. You have to go through a screening online, which is reviewed by a healthcare provider. The sample collection kit comes with a nasal swab, which is mailed back to an authorized lab for testing. The Chambly City Council in self isolation this afternoon after Councilman Brian Mock attended a public meeting on Thursday and then tested positive for coronavirus on Sunday. The city says Mock wasn't showing any symptoms during the meeting and wore a mask, practiced social distancing, as did everyone in the room. All city employees who attended the meeting will quarantine for 14 days. The Civic Center will be cleaned and temporarily closed for 10 days. Well, as the state relaxes social distancing restrictions, we're hearing from many of you concerned about large crowds, but it's not just the outside you need to be concerned about. Christy Diaz explains. The phrase social distancing has become a household name, but even social distancing has its limits. Being six feet apart inside, where everybody's touching the same thing and breathing on each other for long periods of time can still be a breeding ground for the virus. It's like why everybody gets sick in winter. It's too cold, so no one goes outside. Well, that's why this blog post is getting a lot of attention. It's written by an immunologist and professor out of the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. He came up with a math equation for how people catch coronavirus. Look, I know, I know you're all sick of at home learning, but just Bear with me, okay? So this equation is successful infection equals exposure to the virus multiplied by time. Minimizing the amount of time that you spend in those environments becomes really important in lowering your risk. And spoiler alert, those high risk environments, yeah, they're all inside. A single cough releases 3,000 droplets. A sneeze, 10 times more, and it speeds up to 200 miles per hour. Remember, droplets are how you catch this virus. Think of it this way. If an infected person sneezes, where would you rather be when this virus rocket explodes? Here or here? The longer an infected person spends in that area, the more they can potentially release into the environment, which then increases the risk for everybody else who's in that restaurant. Being outside is not a guarantee for staying virus free, but it might be something to consider before you go into a crowded restaurant, bus or office. Yeah, I'd prefer to stay outside. Virtual learning is wrapping up for most school districts in Georgia this week, but parents, teachers and students are already wondering what the next school year will look like. As Caitlin Ross reports, it's still uncertain. I think the fear of the unknown right now is just so overwhelming that nobody knows what's going to happen in two weeks, let alone two months. Katie McCoy has three kids and has been watching what other countries are doing as their students return to school. All those kids who are wearing masks, there are some kids like in different countries where they show the kids like in these little plexiglass bubbles. That could be really, really difficult for our children to manage. On Facebook, Kelly agreed, saying she wouldn't send her ninth grader back if she had to wear a mask and stay in one place all day. But Courtney joked her kids are going back no matter what, even if they have to wear hazmat suits and oxygen masks to stay safe. Most all parents agreed they just want answers. But school districts told 11 Alive they don't have any to give just yet. Fulton County was the only district to send a written plan, but it outlines three very different options. One, go back in person in the fall with the teachers wearing masks and the kids spaced out in the classroom. 
Two, return to virtual learning in the fall with all teachers and students staying home. Or three, a hybrid of both, some in-person learning and some online learning. Even if we don't have answers, Katie says she hopes there will be understanding. We're going to have to give each other a lot more grace with this, and I think a lot of that's going to have to come from the top. Most school districts told me they just don't know what school is going to look like when they go back in the fall. While they're looking at all of their options, they say they're not in a position to make a decision just yet. So parents, if you would like to weigh in, just go directly to your district school board. You can write, call them, or in many cases, weigh in on social media. The board of each district will ultimately have to vote on its plans moving forward. Meanwhile, colleges and universities are also trying to decide what their campuses will look like in the fall. And high school graduates are forced with making some tough decisions about their college days. Jerry Carnes connects the coronavirus with the student gap year. The coronavirus has not only impacted students this school year, it's already influenced how some college students are looking at next year. Here's the connection between COVID-19 and prospective college students taking a gap year. A survey by the Art and Science Group found 17% of all high school seniors across the country are considering a year off before starting college. A survey by the marketing firm Simpson Scarborough found 20% of the high school students questioned say they'll take a year off if their school of choice offers only online classes in the fall. Many students fear missing out on the full college experience like living in a dorm and attending football games. The Gap Year Association that offers guidance for students considering a year off says their website has seen as much as a 150% spike in visitors. The association says typically about 40,000 high school seniors take a gap year beginning each fall. That was Jerry Carton's reporting. Starting on Friday, LA fitness gyms across Georgia will reopen their doors with a long list of new safety measures. They include limiting the amount of people inside the facility at a time. The sauna, swimming pool, and daycare centers will remain closed. The chain says Georgia is one of the first markets it plans to reopen. And Nordstrom and Nordstrom rack stores in Georgia will reopen on Thursday. The company says all employees will go through a health screening when they arrive to work. Customers and employees will also be provided with face masks. And coming up, 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy is answering your coronavirus questions. Let us know if you have one. Text the number on your screen. It is 404-885-7600. And remember to text, don't call, include your name.